body right now, Lord. There is nothing that you can't heal, and you're not scared of cancer. So we're declaring in the name of Jesus right now, God, healing it to her body. And we're asking, God, that every hand that was raised, every person in this place tonight, God, today, that needs a healing touch, that needs a way made, we're speaking the name of Jesus over them right now, God, declaring that every chain must be broken, every stronghold must come down, every high thing that has exalted itself above the knowledge of you must come down in Jesus' name. We're declaring that you are the God that is a signs, miracle, and wonder working God. So we speak it in this house today, knowing that you are more than enough. So we praise you and we thank you this morning that we can come to you with our needs and our problems and you're working everything out for our good. That we can stand on your word this morning, God, knowing it will not come back void, but it will accomplish that we set out to do, Lord, because your word always produces fruit. So we thank you this morning that you're always enough for us. We love you and we praise you. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? Praise this morning. I just have a few quick announcements for us today and then we'll be taking up our offering and doing our scripture reading. But remember today, today is the day that you need to turn in the Tupelo Children's Mansion gift card. It's a $25 gift card, and hopefully you've taken care of that already. If you have forgotten and you need a, a couple days, please let us know. Let me know today. If you've signed up and you got a kid and you maybe you've forgotten to bring it today, come see me right after church. Just let us know what the kid's name is. That way we can take care of that. But if you have it, you can turn it into the information center back there. Turn in your gift. Please do not seal the Christmas card with the gift card in it. Put the name of the child on there. You can keep the picture for yourself, but just don't seal the actual Christmas card because we need to go through and check just to make sure all of our kids that were there are taken care of that are checked. And so please do that for us today. Everyone say Wednesday. First Wednesday night service, and it's going to be a great time. There'll be no LK. There'll be no youth this Wednesday night. We'll all be here in the sanctuary. It's going to be a great night of worshiping God, being able to celebrate the time and celebrate his birth. We're kicking off our Christmas series today called Seek, and it's going to be an awesome time. Excited about hearing Pastor this morning, knowing it's going to be a great day. Next Sunday will be baby dedication, and I know we've had a couple of couple of babies that have been born since our last one and so if you would like your baby to be a part of our baby dedication please go to the app today please go sign up it's just got baby's name and a few information thing about what we need there to be able to do the dedication so go there and sign up next sunday is also our legacy offering and we know that it's not a debt that we owe but a seed that we can sow into the kingdom of god and we know that god will always bless us Christmas Eve. Can y'all believe Christmas Eve is almost here? Christmas Eve service, December 24th. It's a Saturday night at 9 p.m. At 9 p.m. It's one of our greatest services. I think it's honestly my favorite service that we do here at the church. At 9 p.m. will be our Christmas Eve service. And Pastor always says that we will have you out of here firmly at 10 o'clock, not a minute after. And so it's going to be a great time celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, we have still some extra Family Weekend shirts back there in the back. If you'd like to get some at the Information Center, they're $10. And still today, help us out by going and sharing our social media posts. We've met many that have helped us. If more could help us, that would be great. Go to Facebook and go share the post. Share today's service. Share anything that you see come out from our TLC Facebook page and help us out as we get the word out because... I don't know if you know, but social media is a great way to advertise your church just as well as word of mouth is these days. And so make sure that you're going and sharing that. And if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, today is a great day to be baptized in Jesus' name. We have robes back there if you don't have clothes, and we can take you down in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let me ask you a question. You know what? I'll hold off on that. Mike, come up here. Real quick, Mike's going to read us our scripture this morning, and we know that we like to start our service off in the Word. We'll be going from Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 in the King James Version. Amen. Who in here knows that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God? Amen. So, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government, and peace shall there be of no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice, henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hey Amen. Let's get a word, a hand clap this morning. I love the part, the parts in there that, that cause his different names. He's the, the, the everlasting father. He's the prince of peace. But I think my favorite part of that scripture is his kingdom will have no end. We serve a kingdom that will outlast anything else that this world has to offer. Anything that you're facing, depression, sickness, whatever it is, I can promise you this. It will not outlast Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father. Now let me ask you a question, and then we'll go into our worship part of the service. And it's a very serious question. Has God blessed you this week? Has God taken care of you this week? We're going to take up our tithes and our offering here this morning. And we know that this is something that we can't outgive God. When you give unto him, he is going to bless you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. For if we trust in him, the word says we will lack no good thing. And so he'll take care of us. And so if you would, get your tithes and your offering out right now. Let's lift them up to heaven. Father, we thank you so much for all your many blessings. Thank you, God, that there's not one thing that we've lacked this week. Not one good thing because you've taken care of us, Lord. You've supplied every one of our needs according to your riches and glory. So, Lord, I pray, God, over every single person that gives this morning, God, that you put a blessing on them that would blow their mind. A blessing, Lord, God, that their storehouse can't even contain what you want to pour out on them and their family, Lord. Bless them so much that the world takes notice, Father, of the hand that is upon their life. I thank you this morning for what you're going to do and what you've already done. In Jesus' name. Let's come out the right side and go back in the left, and let's worship the Lord this morning. Places of 
on my heart and the pastor was nice enough to let me just get it off my chest I just want to say I want to let everybody know out there when we come up here to praise and worship is to lead you into worship is for you to come down here receive the Holy Ghost get that magical more that Angie talks about and I just I talked to pastor about it so if I offered you a hundred thousand dollars it's more than you got you want it don't you so God's offering you more so why wouldn't you want it so when we praise and worship we would love for everybody to come down here. I want you to open your hearts, open your minds to what God has for you. Okay, because it's a gift. It's a powerful gift. We live in an evil world right now. Amen? Why would you not want to come out and receive the Holy Ghost and just magnify His love and praise Him? I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not saying anything bad because I went to Pastor. I said, Pastor, I want to do praise and worship in the nicest, loving way. You know, Pastor, he said, if I can't get you to come right down here and worship, right here, how can you get on this platform and help other people worship? And I thought, who is he to judge me? That's why I went home and thought that. I don't know if I told Pastor that. I was mad. Who is he to judge me? Pastor later, later talked to me and said, I'm not judging you on your salvation. I'm not questioning your salvation. I'm not questioning any of that. There's just more. And you need, you want that more. You've got to have that more. He gets more every day. Pastor gets more. Angie gets more. Brandy gets more. There's more for you. I just want everybody to know that because I sat in that seat right back there. Right in front of, uh, you know what I'm talking about. 
I'm going plank. I'm sorry, y'all. Right there in that seat, and I sat there, and I thought I was worshiping, but I wasn't worshiping, guys. So I get it. This is coming from me who sat right there. This is not coming from Pastor. Pastor says it all the time, but sometimes we get last day to it. Sorry. We get just where we're doing it, and we're sitting there, and we just don't come down. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge each one of y'all on these next two songs to come down here. Open up your heart and just praise and worship. we got a good God. He's a gracious God. He's a loving God. So please, open up your hearts and open up your mind and just come down here and worship Him. He's not mad at you. He's not disappointed. His grace is greater still than all of your own choices. And He's full of mercy. And He's ever kind. Here is invitation. His arms are open. Of what the mercy 
your hands and let's just thank him. Would you just thank him for the power that's in the blood? Would you thank him for the power that has touched your life? That has transformed you? you give the Lord just a great big hand clap of praise right now. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians, for leading us into the divine presence of Almighty God. You may be seated today. It's so good to have each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. Uh, if there's somebody that is missing that normally sits by you, why don't you text them? They may be sick today. We've got several that are out with sickness, and we certainly want to remember all of them in prayer. Uh, we are moving into an exciting time. Uh, I love Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving is always, always uh, a wonderful reminder uh, of just how thankful uh, that we really should be. Uh, and then we flip the switch uh, and we go into December. Uh, and December is a time uh, that we remember uh, that he came uh, as a perfect lamb uh, and became our sacrifice, right? So that we could have life uh, and life uh, more uh, abundantly. Uh, I'm glad that all of you uh, are here today. I really, really am. Uh, we are going to start a series today entitled Seek. Uh, Seek. Uh, and the subtitle today is God is Seeking You. Would you say that with me? God is Seeking Me. Come on, one more time. God is Seeking Me. For four Hundred years, there was silence. For 400 years, not a word came down from heaven. It was a very dark time. It was a very hopeless hour. And it felt like that God, have forgotten his people. But you see, with one turn of the page, from Malachi to Matthew, 400 years of silence was over. All seemed lost. But then something miraculous happened. An angel, you see, uh, appeared uh, to Mary. You'll find in Luke chapter 1, uh, 26 through 38. Uh, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, uh, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married uh, to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greeting, favorite woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and distraught, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Be not afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him a throne of his ancestor, David. And he will rule over all of Israel forever. 
His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will, will come upon you uh, and the power uh, of the Most High uh, will overshadow you uh, so that the baby that will be born will be holy. Will one of you come down here and help me? And he will be called the Son of Look at this. The son. Uh, who used to say uh, she was barren, uh, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of the Lord will never fail. I'm going to say that again. The word of the Lord will never fail. I wish you would read that with me. For the word of the Lord will never fail. Come on. The word of God will never fail. Look at this. Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left. The one, the one who had been promised, the Messiah, is finally coming. For thousands of of years, it was prophesied about a Savior that would come and rescue his people. And now, you see, the time has come. So how? So how then would the Messiah come? How would God in the flesh come into the world that he created. Well, you see, God sought after a willing and an obedient vessel to seem to be the bridge from the supernatural to the natural, and he found the perfect choice in Mary. This Christmas season, we will be going through a series called Seek that will revolve around the Christmas story. I don't know if I've ever told you, but I like Christmas. I don't know if I've ever told you, but I like gifts. I don't know if I've ever told you this. I even like giving gifts. My wife, over the last few years, has become Miss Scrooge. And uh, we don't give as many gifts as we used to. And it's really kind of boring. But we'll get through it. Many, many hear the word seek and immediately go to seeking after God first in their mind. But just like in the Christmas story, God, you see, sought after people before they sought after him. There would be no story of Christ's birth if not for God seeking and finding people that would be willing and obedient to be vessels, you see, that he could use. God sought. After the best mama. Now, now, I'm just going to tell you something. You ask every mama here and they think they're the best. And, and you know what highly offends mamas? If their kids don't agree. <laughs> and you know what really offends mamas? If the spouse don't agree. 
There are certain triggered questions. As a husband, you just say yes. Yes, you're right. You're right. But listen, God sought after and found the very best mama. And he chose Mary. Do you understand that, that God could have sought after the most highly intelligent woman there was in that day? He could have went to some royal family and out of that royal family picked a young lady to be the mama but no he didn't he goes and he picks a poor teenage girl from Nazareth in the world's eyes there was nothing hear me nothing special about Mary but can I tell you one thing she found favor with God. Because of that favor, she would be the one that would give birth to Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel is God with us. Once Gabriel is done telling Mary what will come to pass, you can truly see why she found favor with God. She looked at that angel and she said in verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. She didn't say, now, come on, Gabriel. I haven't been with a man. Come on, Gabriel. I'm a virgin. Gabriel, how can I? She didn't go through all of the things uh, that you and I would go through. Uh, she didn't have the 100,000 questions uh, that you women are so easily able to flip off the, the top of your head. She didn't have it. That's why she found favor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got to get back on their good side, don't I? But here's what she said. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Mary was willing to be obedient and allow God to birth something that was so amazing on the inside of her. In fact, it was miraculous in how it all took place. Place. Mary uh, did not question God, uh, nor did she try to reason uh, her way out of it. Uh, Mary was simply obedient uh, and became the vessel uh, to which the supernatural uh, could be connected uh, to the natural. Now I wonder. Now this is what I wonder. If God is truly seeking after you. Do you know that just like God sought after Mary to be the connection between the supernatural realm and the natural realm. Do you understand in 2022 that he is looking for somebody else who he can connect with and who he can use. You see, Mary was the vessel for that day. Mary was the vessel 
for that hour. But Mary is not living in 2022. But God is still looking for somebody that can be the connection between the supernatural and the natural. And oh, I don't know about you. I don't have a lot of talent. I haven't come from a royal family. I'm not the most intelligent. But oh, there's a hunger. And there's a desire. And there's a willingness. And there's an obedience on the inside of me that says, God, I want you to use me. I wonder how many in this house today would say, God, in this hour, in this moment, at this time in history, I desire for you to seek me. There's a lot of things in our world that draws our attention. There's a lot of things in our world uh, that you and I go after. Uh, there's a lot of things that draw uh, our wants uh, and our desires. Uh, but oh, I believe uh, I can stand here uh, in the fear of the Lord uh, and say there's nothing uh, in this world uh, that I want any more uh, than the God uh, to save me. I want God to find in me a vessel soul that can connect the supernatural to the natural. What is God? What is God trying to birth within you and I this Christmas season? Where are you that could be the bridge between the supernatural and the natural for God is seeking for a willing and an obedient vessel just like Mary said God regardless of what it is I'll do what you ask me to do God if you want me to pray for someone, I will. God, if you want me to bless someone, I will. God, if you want me to encourage somebody, I will. God, if you want me to help somebody this Christmas season, I will. I believe above all things, our theme word around here for the month of December should be, I will. I will, I will, I will. God, I want to be that vessel that you're seeking. I want to be the vessel that doesn't give you a thousand and one questions, but I'll just stand here in all of my known faults and just say, God, here I am. Mary, Mary knew better than anyone that she come from a poor background. Mary knew better than anyone that she was not of the wealthy type. She knew better than anybody there was no royal line that flowed in her blood. Mary knew without a shadow of a doubt that she had faults and failures and yet God picked her can I tell somebody my Lord I feel the Holy Ghost I feel like telling somebody you may not have all the talents and you may not have all the abilities oh I wish I could get up here and sing I wish I could play that organ I wish I could play those drums but I can't play these hands I can't open this mouth I can't magnify the Lord Lord, I can be a worshiper. I can be the bridge that can connect the supernatural right to the natural. I'll do whatever you ask, God, because I want to be a vessel that can connect 
the natural to the supernatural. As Mary, as Mary was the one, listen to this, that connected all of humanity to Emmanuel. So can you, listen to pastor, so can you connect the humanity of our area to God, to Emmanuel. This Christmas, God is seeking for a man. God is seeking for a woman. God is seeking for a young person, a boy or a girl. God's seeking for a child that he can work through. He is going to and fro on this earth seeking for everyone that will simply be willing to and be obedient and allow him to birth something great in you. And if you will allow him to birth something great in you, you can change the world. Mary changed the world by giving birth to Emmanuel, God with us. And God is seeking after somebody today that will stand in the face of peer pressure, uh, that will stand in the face of idolatry, uh, that will stand in the face of friends and family uh, and say, God, let your will be done in me. He's seeking. He's seeking for people that will stand in the gap. For in the book of Ezekiel, God was getting ready to destroy the city of Jerusalem. But we all know him being the merciful God that he is. He looked for somebody. He looked for anyone that he could just simply stand in the gap for the land and for the people. You know what the Bible says? He found no one. Ezekiel 20 and 30. I'm reading from the New King James Version. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me. On behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found no one. And I tell you today that God, God is seeking for someone this morning who will stand in the face of opposition who will stand in the face of their family, who will stand in the face of idolatry and be the gap changer between natural to supernatural. I want to tell you, because he couldn't find anyone to stand in the gap, destruction fell. God was trying to give his people an opportunity, you see, to repent of all of their sins. But no one would stand up and stand in the gap for the land and for the people. So therefore, the consequence was great. Many years later, God sought and found someone to stand in the gap between, you see, the natural and the supernatural. And her name was Mary. What makes Mary different? 
I'll tell you what makes Mary so different. She was a willing and she was an obedient vessel. Can I ask you, without being mean, what will be said of you? What will be said of me? Will God find someone to stand in the gap in our time and be the bridge between the natural and the supernatural? Or will it be like in Ezekiel's time where God could not find anyone to stand in the gap? I don't know about you. I love the lights. I love the palm of grand. What are those called? poinsettias. I, I love that. I love the manger. I love the star. I love everything that Christmas represents. I really, really do. But I've come to tell you that Christmas is bigger than trees. Christmas is bigger than the manger. Christmas is bigger than a Christmas flower. It's God looking for somebody that will stand in the gap in this time and in this hour when it's so easy to be rebellious. When it's so easy to rebel against authority. It's easy. You want to know why it's easy? Because media is making it easy. Congress is making it easy. Our president's making it easy. Rebellion is an easy thing to do now. And people don't look bad on it. But can I tell you, God is looking for somebody in 2022 that'll stand in the gap and be the hedge between the natural and the supernatural. What if God is trying to birth something in you right now? It may seem crazy, but but will you say, God, here I am? Or will you have to say, no, God, you got to give me more detail. No, God, I got to have more questions answered. No, God, you got to give me a little bit bigger blueprint. You see, I truly believe that God is trying to birth within this church for this hour that we're living in. Not to be an ordinary church, but to be a church of power and authority and anointing. Come on, I believe that God is looking for somebody that will stand in their pew and say, God, you can count on me. My friends may stay seated. My friends around me may look at me crazy. But God, I'll be the individual that will stand and be the connection between the natural and the supernatural. See, God's looking for somebody. Just like he looked for Mary, he's looking for somebody right now. He's looking for a body. He's looking for a church that's not wrapped up in things, but that's wrapped up in him. That's not all about programs, but they are all about him. Are we going to accept the call of God seeking after us? Mary didn't understand everything. Mary didn't know all that was going to take place. But she was willing. She was willing to allow God to use her anyway. One of my favorite Christmas songs of all times is, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make things new? The child 
that you have delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to blind men? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storms with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy will walk where angels climb? You see, Mary, when you kiss the little baby, you're kissing the face of of God. The blind will see. The deaf will hear. The dead will live again. The lame will leap and the dumb will speak the praises of the Lamb. I tried to get them to sing that today, but they told me no. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, Did you know that your baby boy one day would rule nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? And the sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. The truth about the song is Mary really didn't know. She knew he was the son of God. But she had no way of knowing all that Jesus was capable of and all that he was going to do. She didn't know that Jesus would really walk on water. She really didn't know that he would heal the sick and feed the hungry and raise the dead. The words that were given to her was he would save his people from their sins. The angel didn't say how that would all happen. She just believed And she trusted in God, even though she didn't know everything. And look at how God worked out everything for the good. You won't fully understand all that God wants to birth in you in this Christmas season. But you and I have to be like Mary, and we have to trust God. We have so much more information than Mary did. The difference between you and I and the difference between Mary is that Mary really didn't know. But you and I do know. We do know Jesus walked on water. We do know he heals the sick. We do know he feeds the hungry and he raises the dead. We do know he is the great I am. We know exactly who he is and what he can do. Mary, Mary, you see, didn't really know. But what makes Mary different than you and I is that Mary trusted God even though she didn't know. Mary was willing to stand in the gap. Mary was willing to be obedient. Mary was willing to be willing to be the vessel that God without asking 101,000 questions. Mary just said, here I am, Lord. I'm your servant. You see, God is seeking 
God is seeking after someone this Christmas that he can really, really use. Will you be the one? Will you allow God to work in you what God wants to work in you? But pastor, I'm in my 80s, so... Pastor, I got a thousand kids, so. There may be more coming, I don't know. Maybe a word of prophecy right there, brother. Shut that prophecy up, huh? (laughs) Nip that thing. (laughs) I want to ask you. Are you going to allow your excuses? Are you going to allow your shortcomings to keep you from being what God wants you to be? He was able to take a poor nothing. Nobody really even knew who Mary was. Come from a very nasty town of Nazareth. Study it. She was poorer than dirt. Try to buy some dirt today and see how much it'll cost you. She had so many things going against her in the human eyes, in the human flesh. But God looked down and said, that's a vessel. And God sought and seeked after Mary. He seeked her. He said, Gabriel, go down and give Mary this word. Oh, today you would like to change places with Mary. Every woman in this house would. Because she gave birth to the Son of God. To Emmanuel. Yeah, you all would love to give birth. I mean, my mom was pretty awesome because she gave birth to me. I mean, that set her apart from most mothers. And that's the way you should feel about your mother. But I'm going to tell you something. Mary was a nothing and a nobody. But God has the ability to look past and beyond. Mike, it don't care what the past was. What God is seeing is your future. What God is seeing in some of you is the present and your future right now. And he's saying you can be the vessel that can connect the natural to the supernatural. You can be the tool that I need to bust this city, this parish, this community wide open for the name of Jesus. got our insecurities we all got our issues even those that are cocky they got issues really issues even those that act like they got it together they're the ones you better be afraid of the most because they're the ones that's really covering up some stuff can I tell you something God's looking for some people in this church right here I know our theme is greater. And as I was preparing for this time of the year, I was asking God, God, what do you want me to do? What direction do you want me to take? How do you want me to deliver? And God just kept dropping the word in my spirit, seek, seek. I'd tell several people and they'd look at me like, are you nuts? What does seek have to do with Christmas? Except for one person, Tommy. Tommy got on board with me. He said, I like it. Because you see, God sought after Mary. And God's trying to seek after some of you. But you got to pull down the walls. You got to pull down the obstacle.
I love the song, Mary, Did You Know? But I love that part. When you kissed your little baby, you kissed your face. Is Jimmy here? Where is, where is Jimmy? Oh, he's in the nursery. Well, take too long. I'd use you, but that's a girl. I need a guy. And then it goes on to say, the blind will see. The deaf will hear. The dead will live again. The lame will leap, and the dumb will speak. The praises of the Lamb. So I want to ask you this morning, I don't need a lot of hype. Thank you. That's just cool. I wonder, are you willing to allow God to seek you right now? Are you willing to say, God, it's all yours. It's all yours, God. I give it all to you. I wonder, I know you're still seated, but I'm going to ask you to get up from your seat and walk down to the front of this building. Only, only if you're willing to say, God, would you seek me? Come on. There's a song that goes, something about seeking him. The more I seek him, the more I love him. You know that? You know that song? Here's the thing I know, folks. If you'll seek after God, God will seek after you. It, it never fails. But can I ask you, are you going to be so wrapped up in buying gifts, giving gifts, meeting with friends, getting with family, being a part of this parade, doing that parade, going here, going there, In this first Sunday, this first Sunday of December, I wonder if there's a heart that's crying out on the inside of you. The more I seek you, God, the more I seek you. I want you, God, to use me. I want you, God, to flow through me. God, I want to be the vessel that you're calling me to be. Would you bow your heads right now? Would you just begin to lift your voice unto God? And would you just begin to talk to Him right now? Here I am, God. Here I am.